Hello, music theory scholars. So this is a quick how-to video for scale degree identification. So we are gonna talk about three different methods for identifying scale degrees in a melody in, ma in major and minor. And then we're gonna look at this melody right here and we're gonna talk about a quick method for identifying the scale degrees in the solfege syllables. So there are a lot of reasons why musicians need to be able to identify scale degrees very quickly. Um, for instance, if I were to sight sing this melody, we often sight sing using solfege syllables, which are a type of scale degree identification. And that makes it easier to be able to sing melodies that I've never seen before. Um, we use um, scale degrees when we're doing transposition. We often think about what the scale degrees are in this key, and then we transpose those to scale degrees in another key. Um, we also use scale degrees if I'm doing harmonization, for instance. So if I want to take this melody and figure out what chords are going to work, I need to know what scale degrees they are so I can match those measures with chords that would work to harmonize with them. So there's lots and lots of different reasons why we use scale degrees and we have to do them very, very quickly um, for basic music tasks. Okay, so let's start with major first. Um, so I got a major scale here. I've got a C major scale. Um, there are three, really three common ways of naming the different members of the scale. The first is scale degree numbers. Um, so in this case, if we're in the key of C major, um, the first member of the scale is always starts with scale degree one, and you typically see these with the little carrots over the top of them. And then you're just going to, you're just going to work your way up the scale. The second step of the scale, scale degree two, third step is scale degree three, and so forth. When we get to the top of the scale, we don't say eight, though. We always say one. So no matter what you're, what's going on in the melody, all of the Cs are all going to be scale degree one. All of the Fs, no matter what register they're in, are all scale degree four. And it's always relative to that bottom note. If I'm in the key of G major, then scale degree one is G. If I'm in the key of F sharp major, it's F sharp. So it's always relative to the scale. The second method that is commonly used, especially in ear training classes, is solfege syllables because we use this commonly for sight singing melodies. Um, and this is done exactly the same way. It's always relative to the scale. So in the key of C major, um, the first member of the scale, the bottom note is always going to be Do, no matter what register that it's in. And then we name them and so forth, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, which you've probably seen before. When we get to the top, it's always going to be Do again, the same as this is one. And these are really the mo two most common. Another method that you're going to see, especially in your music theory courses, is functional names. And these we commonly use, especially when we're talking about harmony. So if we're talking about a harmony that's built on scale degree one, or we're talking about the function of that scale degree, we'll often use these functional names. So we'll call them tonic or supertonic and so forth. And these, again, are also always relative. So in the key of G major, um, G would be the tonic. In minor, this gets quite a bit messier. And this is gonna entirely depend on who your instructor is or what textbook that you're looking at. It could vary quite a bit. So in this case, I have a melodic minor scale up just so we have a bit of variation here. So in the melodic minor scale in the key of C minor, on the way up, we raise up scale degree six and seven. On the way down, we lower it down again. So you can see I've got the scale degrees listed here, and this is one common way of doing it. So in minor scale degrees, we often say instead of three, we say flat three because in relation relative to the C major scale, where I would have E natural, here I have E flat. Relative to the C major scale, if I've got the A flat, I'd have A, it becomes A flat. So we say flat three, flat six, and flat seven because those are lowered relative to the major scale. And then if it goes up and we raise it, we just say it's regular six and seven because relative to the major scale, those are the same notes. Now here's the thing, not all of your instructors will always do this. Sometimes instead you will see simply one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, regardless of whether they're raised or not. Um, and that's also quite common. And if you're doing um, work in musician, you'll see it. that's the way it is in musician. There is no distinguishing between flat three and three. It's just the same. Um, solfege syllables, these are however rather um, consistent um, no matter where you're looking so typically in minor we say may when it's the lowered form and lay and tay when we have the lowered form here but on the way up when we raise it we say law and t just like we do in major so those tend to be consistent and then you'll see the same thing with the functional names sometimes you see flat mediant and flat submediant sometimes you'll just see mediant and submediant just like with the with the flats or not with the scale degrees. But for right now, we're not gonna worry so much about those. The only one that's really kind of important is that when seven is raised, it's always the leading tone. When it's not in minor, we always refer to this as the subtonic and not the leading tone. And that's the only one you really kind of need to just kind of flag in your mind. Okay, so let's, with this in mind, um, let's go back to the example that we had. 
And we're going to start by just identifying the, the scale degrees in this melody. So what I need to do first of all is I need to figure out obviously what key that we're in um, because based on whatever the key it is, that's going to be my scale degree one or my do. So if I look at this melody, I've got two sharps here in the key signature, which means that we're either in the key of B major, right? Or we're in the key of, I'm sorry, B minor, or we're in the key of D major. So to determine what key that we're in, I need to, you know, do a little bit more investigating. I can see that, for instance, we end on Bs over here. And I know that if I'm thinking in the key of B, that would be my scale degree one, right? If I'm thinking in the key of D, then that means that this would be scale degree six. Melodies, if they end conclusively, most often end on scale degree one. That would be most common for a melody. So a melody that would end on six would be unusual. So this tells me that we're probably in B. But I see another clue here too. I also see that we, I see these A sharps. Minor melodies often have accidentals, right? Because we have an ascending form. You think of the melodic minor scale when we raise up six, seven, when we go to one. I've got an A sharp here, which would be scale degree seven, right? In the key of B. So this suggests to me that this is my T, my scale degree seven in the key of B minor. I also see that I'm starting with an F going to a B. If I'm in the key of B, that would be a five to a one. If I'm in the key of D, that would be a three going up to six. Melodies often jump between one, three, and five. So that's another good indication that this is definitely in the key of B minor. Okay, so I've got my key established. So if I'm going to go through this, I, one way I could do is I could write out my B minor scale and I could kind of slowly, meticulously go through and try to figure out each note relative to that scale. But I think what is a little bit easier is to create some anchor points before we do this. So if I'm in the key of B minor, I'm going to just kind of imagine on the staff, sort of burning the notes onto the staff where B is at by scale degree one. That's the most important anchor in this melody. There's going to be more Bs here than really anything else. And then three and five are other really common notes. And we'll get to why that is when you start getting into harmony. But one, three, and five are really common. And often when melodies leap, they're leaping between those notes. And so they're really nice anchor points. So in my mind, I'm imagining this. I'm just sort of imagining burning it onto the staff. And I'm thinking about everything relative to those three spots. Now this melody is wide, so I might also look at one, three, and five. Well, okay, five is also down here. There's my other F. There's my other B. That's my other one. That might be helpful. So B, D, F. B, D, F sharp. That's my one, three, five. Okay, if I can just memorize that, I'm good to go. So I start off right away with five. So I'm just going to type these in underneath. Five, five, and then I leap up to... Ah, B, D, F, B, there's my one, right? And then everything else I can think about relative to that. So if I get down from one, well, that would be seven. There's back to my one again. You notice we have a skip, but it's to three, right? B, D, F, there's my three. And then if it goes up a step, it'd be four, then up a step, five. When it's stepwise, it's not so bad, right? Let's see, three, two. Okay, I'm imagining burning this onto the staff, right? B, D, F, it's a step below B, so that's seven then. This is a step above B, so that's two. You kind of get the idea. So you're imagining on the staff those notes and everything is relative to that. And I find that that makes it a little bit quicker for me to identify solfege syllables. All right, so I hope that helps. Good luck with your scale degree ID.